Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the beautiful outdoors, and we once again have another nice day outside. It's crazy. I'm going to attempt to start by fishing outside. I've got a couple underwater cameras going. Not sure how the visibility is going to be yet or not. As the sun progresses a little bit higher, it could get better. But I've got one with my active bay here. I've got one a little bit further in pointed at a live minnow. Walleye perch is the target today. We're gonna to basically start fishing. I don't know how good I'll see the underwater cameras. I feel like they might show up better on the video than they will for myself. So maybe it's gonna be more of an overlay thing or you'll see more. I don't know if I'll be able to actually like do play by play of them down in the mud or anything like that. I might just be talking through myself through the live scope, which I have that running as well. We've got so many cameras running today. It's insane, but let's get fishing. If we have to later in the day, we'll progress to the shack if it gets too windy, too cold type of thing. But for now, we're going to fish outside and make things happen. Let's do it. So, so far this year, the finicky floor is set up with this jackknife jig. I'm using a 1.8. It's been so good. A lot of people ask how I'm hooking these jackknife jigs. There's different ways to hook them. You can use the smaller hook right here and just kind of hook it on the tail. I've actually been nose hooking them. If I can get control of my minnow here, I've been nose hooking them with the bigger hook and just so they don't like move as much but because of this jig and the, the uh, movement of it they can still move so much there anyways i don't want my minnow to be always like cruising around like really really good if the fish are really active i don't mind like back hooking or tail hooking them if the fish aren't as active i'd rather hook them through the nose to the, to the wall i don't have to, to work as hard for that fish anyways i think i'm on the bottom already I'm only in like probably 10 feet of water here. I'm gonna hopefully be able to see this on the underwater camera. Let's see. Yeah, there it's swimming. I go down a little bit more. I don't know how well this is gonna show up. I really don't know if it's a sun glare or if it's me, like, or if it's actual visibility, but I can see the jig. We're gonna go down a little bit more here. Right there. We're gonna pop the bale here. It's always easier to let out a little bit once you have this set up than it is to brain line up. So right now, if I have a bit higher, I can go here and I can just pull a, a, some line off the spool. Let's check it there. Where is it? Yeah, see right now I'm gonna drop it down just a little bit. So we're gonna go like this, drop, drop. Way easier to drop it than it is to put it up. And where are we now? Right there. So, we're gonna we're gonna go with that. I don't the visibility isn't crazy good, but it could get better as that sun gets higher, I think. It's also outside and I can't see as well. But that's that's what you need to know about underwater cameras. It's not always gonna be amazing visibility. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. I also have it a good four feet away, and I like further away. If I had it closer, well I'll say I have better visibility. And we'll see, maybe if I get some fish, then I'll put it closer, but for now, I wanna catch some fish before I really get that camera too close. Okay, finicky floor cover on. I'm not using the outside base right now, just cause I don't need to. It's not cold enough outside, so I don't need a perfect seal. And yeah, uh, here we go. One camera set up. Now let's go to our active bait. Okay, on the active bait, I'm gonna start with a scissor kick. The old scissor kick. Again, I don't know how well this is going to show up. It's probably going to get better as the day goes, most likely, most likely. Let's see, where's my bait? Oh, there's my bait. So there's definitely, I can see the bait. I just don't know how good it's gonna be, but we're gonna start with this anyway. Yeah, I won't see him on the camera because of the, the sun glare being outside. So I'm gonna fish him on the live scope, but we'll overlay camera footage come on no maybe take him down in the dirt I don't think he's very big from what I can tell come on maybe a perch maybe a perch kind of feels perchy really no small walleye <laughs> A perch would have been would have been nice. Well, first fish. Should be an underwater camera though anyway, but first fish is a small walleye. Small walleye. 
gives me some hope anyway for, for right here. I have never fished this spot, ever. I just picked a spot that looked good on a map. That is, uh, I'm up on a little shallow flat here of like, mm, probably 10 to 12 feet-ish with uh, the shores right here. So there's a good drop off there from shore. And then there's a deep drop off the side of me. I just picked a spot off a map that I thought might look good. So we'll see. I'm seeing quite a few fish just a little bit deeper where I likely won't have any visibility with the underwater camera. That starts to be a thing. I can always set up the shelter because I'll probably fish there till like dark. Even though it's a new spot, I don't have confidence here yet at all. I'd like to give it a, a full day, most likely. And then I can still fish my live minnow outside with an underwater camera. So we'll see. I haven't really decided yet. We're going to give this a little bit out here for sure with the active bait and the, the live minnow. Sometimes it could just take, you know, a little while for things to happen. When you first get to a spot, you drive there, drive on the ice, you create a bunch of commotion, you're walking around, you can scare fish away, especially if it's shallower. So sometimes it takes them a little bit to come back. Or it just might not be a very productive area. Either way, we'll, we'll catch some fish by the end of the day. We've already got one. We've already got one. We've got a video already. We've got one fish. We're done. I'm seeing so many fish out this way. I don't know if it's the depth that they want just a little bit deeper. I don't know if it's the camera that's stopping them from coming this way. Like they're, they're starting to kind of come this way and they like, they just hit some kind of like wall or line where they're like, almost like they're traveling a, a certain depth, a certain contour. So I'm going to pop a hole, a couple holes further this way, possibly do some fishing with the flasher. And if I catch some, catch a couple outs where I'm going to set up the shelter and possibly move the live scope down and fish inside, but then keep an underwater camera going outside with the live minnow, hoping that I can still score on that as well. I feel like when I go a little bit deeper here though, I'm not going to have good visibility on the underwater camera at all, but I've been fishing for an hour and a half, maybe two hours and I've got that one walleye and that's it. And just not a pile of fish coming by. I think one pike. Uh, I came by and that was pretty much it after that. Oh, there's my dead stick's gonna go off. I can see the rod bending, but the flag isn't popped yet. Did I not, there it is. Okay, hopefully a walleye, not a pike. Hopefully, doesn't feel very big. No, it's a walleye. It's a walleye, okay. Well, there's hope. There's hope, definitely. Definitely hope. This looks like a good eater. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> He's trying not to be an eater. Well, good news, bad news. We caught one uh, that should have been on the underwater camera. I just looked at it and it was dead. It's an older underwater camera and uh, obviously, I, did, I charged the battery on last night, but the battery died. So I, I only reason I'm holding this for so long is because I'm keeping it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna keep a fish, or if you're not gonna keep a fish, release it right away. But I'll put this one out of his misery right now. I like to break their necks when I, I you know what? I'll show us. It's always something I've like debate about not showing on camera, but I like to basically. go like this snap their neck put them out of their misery right away bleed them out and then clean them when they're fresh yet as well probably about a half an hour I'll, I'll clean them type of thing but there's one anyway okay we'll try this again I'm rolling again thankfully I've got lots of batteries uh, and yeah finicky fluor set up again I definitely got decent visibility here for sure so We'll keep this one out and we'll keep trying different spots over here and eventually I'm going to set up the shelter. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to pinpoint exactly where I want it set up yet. There's fish over here that are like crazy. Oh, it's coming up. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is where I've seen the most fish is right here. And this is where I'm leading to setting up the shelter. And, and I could try the underwater camera over here too. That's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Switched to a jig in a minnow, moved over 50 feet where I'm seeing the most amount of fish and popped about a 20 inch right there. So I don't know yet whether it's 
I don't know, I think it's the contour. I'm about two, three feet, nah, maybe four feet deeper there. So I think it might just be a little bit better because it's deeper, although I did catch that fish and shallower. So I don't know if it's the underwater camera spooking him yet or what, which is a possibility, although that fish was caught with the underwater camera. I, this is my brain right now. It just goes in circles of trying to figure things out, but I'll, I'll fish there a little bit more. And eventually, wherever I set up the shelter will uh, determine where I'm gonna kind of hang up, make my home base. I can keep this pointed here, so I'll probably still see the my uh, jig on the forward facing sonar from far away, but I'm gonna continue to fish with the flasher a little bit. And yeah, just used a full full minnow with a jig that time, a one eighth ounce uh, Kalen's Google Eye jig. Right out of the dirt, right out of the dirt. I don't know if that was the better mark or not, but it's not a bad fish, not a bad fish. Get up here, get up here. No, not bad at all, probably about a 19-ish. Probably, maybe 19 and a half. I don't know, I'm liking this a little bit further away. I think what I might do is set my shelter up around here. I like to set up under the clear, clear stuff. This was clear until I drilled above it. Uh, just in case I catch anything big, it'll look cool for looks under the cam or on the camera. And uh, yeah, maybe move my dead stick out a little bit more, I think and see if I can still get something with the underwater camera. I notice the visibility in the underwater camera is getting a lot better right now with that sun being up. The only thing is once it gets, once it gets too far into the night, my visibility isn't gonna be good at all anyway. Little guy. Big perch, big perch, big perch, big perch. Oh yes, big perch, big perch. And now a jumbo perch up on that flat. 12 inch or so not a huge, huge one, but big, big enough, that's for sure. That really makes me wanna set up on this flat now, I think with the shack for sure. And I'll have a drop off right beside me, like right here. So if I set up a shack here, I guess, like I said already earlier, my head just goes in circles of like finding the optimal spot to set up on, which is a lot of, I can still have my dead stick outside the shack, at least until prime time happens. And then if it gets fast and furious, I'm gonna wanna pull my, my live minnow inside with me. So I think fish a little bit more outside, but it's, it's almost time to start thinking about getting the shelter set up as, as well. Oh yeah, it's a fish. There's a fish on my minnow. Should be recording this time. Got him. Okay. Up shallower. Hopefully it's a walleye. It is a walleye. Okay. Well, there's some walleye up shallow. There's a walleye. There's a walleye on the flat. I think it is time to pop up my shelter though and get ready for a night bite this should be recording this time and yeah a little bit too small to keep going back see ya I'm officially set up for the night bite. The Eskimo Outbreak 450 is set up, dialed, live imaging going in there. I still have my underwater camera right out there with my live minnow. If uh, it gets too dark, I'll pull the camera. If that stays hot, I'll keep it out there. If it gets hot and heavy at the shack, I have an extra hole drilled in here to fish two lines out of the shack. 
3.30, I got about three and a half, four hours left of fishing the way I see it, I think anyway. Sunset's like five, but where I am right now, I've had some success into the dark. So we're gonna hang out in the outbreak and uh, watch our flag. It's the nice thing about all these windows is they're literally the perfect height. So I can sit right here on my chair, fish and watch my flag the whole time. That camera is still foggy. That one's going, so we'll get everything dialed in and get fishing. Fingers crossed we still get some kind of night bite action. I'm gonna do videos in the future where it's like, I just go and I, I set up my shelter and I fish all day, but so far the weather's been so nice this year, it's so hard not to like take advantage of it and move around a little bit and try to find the sweet spots. Not that I found a sweet spot yet today. Seriously? You couldn't go around? Like really, the guy drove between me and the tip up. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Not very big. I meant to go pop it up a little bit and this fish followed. But it's walleye, which definitely gives me some, some confidence in my spot that I set up the shelter on with a little bit of a night bite, hopefully. This is gonna, this one I'm keeping. It'll be a, a nice little eater right there. He's going home, probably a 17 incher. Oh, 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 oh. Right now I've got my settings blown out right now on the live scope. There's lots of like interference because I'm got my gain cranked up fairly high because I want to look far as well at the same time. It was another so this isn't that big either. But it ain't that's not tiny. Maybe another maybe another eater. Maybe another eater. Mm, what do we got? Yeah, maybe a little bit too big deep. To maybe a little bit too big deep. To well I got some potential anyway. Jigging them in a right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. Ooh, and it's out. That's what happens. Barbless hook. I'm thinking I'm gonna measure them just to see how accurate I am, but I'm thinking 19 and a half, maybe 20. Easy. Well, it's like 19 and uh no no it just touches 20. I was gonna say 19 and three quarter, but it just touches 20. This one's got some weird stuff going on with his tail. It's like somebody trimmed it for a tournament or something. Maybe. Looks like a tail trimmer. No, it could be just a form too. But uh going back. Full jig and mina right now is what I'm on. A, an eighth ounce Kalen's Google Eye White White Glow. Right there, yeah. With 10 pound suffix 832 fluorocarbon leader, and then a 10 pound braid, which is suffix 832 ice braid. This is a smoke show from Frostbite. It's a 37 medium light. This is a Frostbite diesel reel. And yeah, that's my setup for the day. I've mostly been using the smoke shows on the uh, drench, or sorry, on the dead stick rod, I have a drench set up. I thought I saw another fish. I was trying to go for a minute at the same time, but yeah. So on the dead stick is the drench, a 39 medium light. Probably my favorite dead stick rod for walleye right now. So I interrupt this video for one small quick announcement that I've been meaning to do, just forgetting to film out on the ice. So I thought I'd do it in the garage and throw it in here. But I wanted to announce the, the third annual Fish with Clayton trip up at Baker's Narrows Lodge. This year, we're gonna be running two different trips, the third and the fourth weekend in February. So the last weekend and the second last weekend in February. It's three days, four nights. For the price that's listed here, you get all of your accommodations, all of your meals, and guided fishing and bait, all the baits included as well. The only other uh, cost on top of that would be your transportation to the lodge and then your transportation on to the ice as well, whether you bring your own or whether you rent sleds from them and then gratuities for the hardworking guides. It's fully guided. If you call up the number listed here, Baker's Narrows, they can give you a list of the people that have come in the past. And if you wanna to talk to them what the trip is all about, but basically, we go fishing together for the day. There's going to be, there'll be several groups laid out and I'll jump from shack to shack to kind of hang out with everybody as the day goes. It's a, it's a guided lake trout fishing trip more than anything. We've been pretty lucky over the last couple of years. We've managed to put some big lakers on the ice in both of the trips. So we're hoping to nail down, well, this will actually be the third and the fourth trip. Cause like I said, we're doing two trips this year. 
the third weekend and the fourth weekend. But contact this number right here that's listed, Baker's Narrows, for more information. There still is availability left on both trips, but not much. I'm working on another special guest that might be coming for one of the trips as well yet, but we'll make that announcement later. So anyways, go call Baker's Narrows if you're interested in the Fish with Clayton trip. So now here's a shot of the live scope, like more dialed in. This now I'm only looking out 25 feet one way, 10 feet the other way. Turn the gain down a lot so I get a little bit better separation. When I'm looking far away, I turn my gain up pretty high just so I can get a feel for everything that's going on out there. I'm not, you don't always have to look for the cleanest, clearest image. Depends really what you're doing. I used to think having something like crystal clear was like the way to go, but that's not the case at all, especially if you're like in a boat hunting for fish in open water. Sometimes you want something with a, that shows more than less basically. Showing less is a, not always a good thing. Okay. Okay, I brought my dead stick rod in here just because the sun is now going behind the hill and I'll lose all my visibility on the underwater camera. I'll fish two, two rods inside the shack now. So I kept them staying on a jig with a minnow there, which is what I had outside. And I switched to a, a small scissor kick right now on this rod. I got lots of fish crawling around, but they're definitely... Definitely smaller ones. So hopefully that's not like what's in this area. Hopefully there's some, some bigger ones in this area yet. I wouldn't mind if these were all perch, but some of them are tiny walleyes. It's a little bit better one coming here. Right there, yeah. A little bit better, not huge. The ones, up, ones are underneath my scissor kick right now are smaller, but this one's a little bit better for size coming up to the live minnow right now. We'll see if it eats that. And then if it doesn't, I'll try to draw it over to the scissor kick here. So that's that 39 medium light drench that I was talking about that was outside in the dead stick. Oh, is one come off the bottom? It's decent too. Okay, okay. Come on. No, neither of these fish. Grumpy. Not super aggro. Oh, this one though. This is the one that come checked out the live minnow to start with. No, not into it at all. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if it's a, a lure thing, a bait thing. I probably should try changing up a few things, I think. Oh, this one's this one right here though. This one's coming. This one's coming. Oh, come on. I want the one below it. I'm just going to try to drop it down in the dirt, maybe. Maybe I can get them to eat if I'm pounding the bottom. Maybe. So far, the jig and the minnow has been the best. And I can go back to a jig and a minnow in a heartbeat. These fish seem to be into that bait pounding on the bottom, though, that's for sure. I'm just hoping a big mama cruises through. I'm really not sure about this spot that I'm on at all. It's always fun to check, try new new areas, new spots. Basically, I just jump around where there's nobody else fishing and hope that somebody doesn't slide in to fish beside me for the day. And then if I come back another time and to fish the same spot and there's somebody there, I just go find another spot again. Got a bunch of fish here. Oh, this guy just picked it up right here as it was dropping. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That guy hit it as it was falling. That's interesting. Interesting. Okay. Oh, I think a fish has my live minnow too. Another 19 inch right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a fish has my live minnow because it disappeared on the screen. Oh, he moved it over then anyway. It's coming up to it again. Not bad. That one hit it on the way down as it was falling. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, yep. Fish on the live minnow. Not very big, though. If he comes off, I wouldn't be upset. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh. There's a couple fish. I don't want this from the front. This back one, though. Right here, right here, right here, right here. <laughs> 
Not huge, but that thing was aggressive at least. That thing was aggressive. I like to see them aggressive. That one right there, it's kind of fly middle. That one's better. This one's better right here. Let's see if I can get him to come to the dead minnow instead. He's keyed in on the live minnow though. He's keyed in on it. It's a little bit better. Not huge, but a little bit. Oh, let's see him come to the dead minnow here instead. Here he comes. Come on, turn up, turn up. Turn up, buddy, turn up. Drop it down in the dirt. He's chasing those little ones away. There we go, yeah, there we go. He liked that. Oh, yeah, he likes that a lot down the dirt. Got him. This one's a little definitely better than those small ones that have been cruising around. As soon as he saw it go down in the dirt, like instantly. I've done videos this year in rocks where I've had to go higher. And I've done videos now where it's like sand silt where they want it down in the dirt. It's not, not huge, but there's the old dirt slurp right there. I've done videos this year where they've wanted it down or they wanted it up high when I'm in the rocks and they can't find it down in the rocks is good. And then right now, this is more of a, a silty, muddy bottom where if they see a bunch of disturbance made down in that sand silt, they're gonna go down and feed in it. Oh, there's another one nice, down, another good one down there right now too. There's something on my dead stick, but it's a, a smaller one. Where'd you go, right here? I'd rather catch this one. There's a fish on that dead stick right now, but it's smaller, much smaller. Much smaller than this one even. This back fish right here, this back one. No, not that one. I need to get below it right here. This one, this one. Come on. This one. No. Okay, I'll take it and swing it down in the dirt, see if it'll come down to it. No, I don't want that one. I had another one that swung right to it. The only thing about down in the dirt is it's harder to pull it away from the ones that you don't want. Because you can't, oh, what's this coming in here though? No, no, oh, this is maybe it. Yeah, this is it. Uh, this other one might be bigger that's coming in now though too. Hard to, hard to know for sure. Hard to know for sure. It's a lot of fish down there that's this size or smaller. A lot. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is a walleye. It's a gooder. This is a walleye. It's a gooder. I was just messing with the heater. I looked over and I saw a nice fish grabbing that went for the live imaging. Or that was on the live imaging and it grabbed the Live minnow. B. Hope this isn't a pike. If this isn't a pike. It's a big walleye. If this is not a pike. It's a big walleye. I've got a pretty perfect drag for this right now. It's acting more like a pike with those runs, but a walleye will do that too. Especially in shallow. That's it's a pike. Ha oh, oh, ha oh, oh. ha. You at least I saw him. At least I saw him. Well, a nice accidental bycatch right there. A 32, 33 inch pike probably. Going back. We'll check this out right away. We've got no rods down there right now. No live scope. Nothing. Prime time and I'm not fishing. Let's get back down there. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, right here. Right here. Got him. Got him. Give him another hook set for good measures. Get up here. Got some nice ones cruising around here through as well. Right here, right here, right now. They say a live scope hurts fishing because you catch too many. I think it's better because I catch the ones I want to catch or try to anyway. Like I catch a lot less fish when I'm marking a bunch of small ones I can pull away from them. I'm just catching the ones that I, I want to catch. So you're not catching, this one's like chasing me around. This thing would be like the easiest thing in the world to catch. But I'm staying away from it. i got one cruising in here though that I'm going to attempt to catch. That's definitely nicer. But I've got to play keep away from this other one at the same time. So I'm going to pop it up now. Get to try to get away from him. This other one's just gliding in. I'm going to drop it right past. 
I gotta try to time it. I gotta try to time it. I gotta try to play keep away and I get my jig in front of this bigger one at the same time. Come on. This little one wants it so bad. He's messing with my program there. Oh no, what, what grabbed it? What grabbed it? Oh man. When there's a bunch of fish around, there's not much you can do. I thought I escaped a little one, but another one came in and grabbed it. There's one going to the slive minnow here too that's not bad. It's not bad. It's not as big as the one that came in that I wanted, but we'll take them. Man, that's the way she goes. It's the way, it's the, way the cookie crumbles. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Not a bad one. One of the bigger ones of the day, like a 22-ish probably, but that other one that was coming in was definitely bigger than this one. Get over here. Look at that thing. Wonder if that's a pike. It is chasing fish around and trying to eat them. I'm almost positive. Here, here, here. Get over here. Look at that thing chase fish around right here right here be a walleye oh come on it's got to be a pike right that is crazy if it's a walleye it's big come on come on could be a big walleye it could be a big walleye if it's a walleye it's a tank I just want to see it yeah, it's a big walleye. I've watched this thing chase around fish down there everywhere. Come on, stay buttoned. Stay buttoned. It's a giant. It's a giant. Come on. I'm stuck. Come on. Stay buttoned. Stay buttoned. Stay buttoned. Stay buttoned. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. That's a tank. Oh, I've watched this fish chase around the smaller fish. Oh, that's a big one. Yes. Oh my goodness. I'm going to measure them first. It's a tank. Good. It's got a good measure. It's got a weird growth right here. Come on. Just touches 30. Just. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I watched this fish chase around little guys down there over and over. And finally I got it to come over to the jig in the minnow and not get those little ones in my way. And it crushed, crushed it. Oh, what a fish. What a fish. You're tired, but you're good. See ya. Where's the, the vapor trail? I can't even keep up with it. The vapor trail just shot right down. <sighs> Boom. Oh, we waited all day for that one. We toughed it out. We found the spot we wanted to spend our evening on, our night on, which is like a big 13, 14 foot flat, close to deep water, shore not too far from me. Awesome fish, baby. Awesome. Where's the hook? Right there. Just a good old one eighth ounce Kalen's Glow Google Eye with a full mina. Full mina. There's a, a gentleman by the name of Roger Garris who does a lot of fishing, walleye fishing, him and his wife, Susan. They're really good friends. And we talk once in a while about fishing. And he said the other day, he's like, I've been having a lot of luck on glow jigs with full minnows. Thanks, Roger. I probably, I won't say for sure that I wouldn't use a jig and a minnow because we know Clayton, I use a lot of jig and a minnows. But, uh, there's a truck coming. Probably going to say one as before. Going to go right, right tight to me. But uh, I definitely uh, thought about you. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try the old jig in a minute. Love it. Why does that, like, why do they got to drive so close? Makes no sense. It was honestly really cool watching that fish rip around and chase smaller fish around. Like I felt like I just had to get my jig in front of it at the right time. 
and I was going to connect with it and then hope it wasn't going to be a pike. That's a big one right there. Unbelievable. I've got a root beer at home with my name on it for a dirty 30, baby. Woo! I was so nervous with that fish at the hole. Like, oh, just sat there and head shake, head shake, head shake, head shake. I had a comment recently asking why I use longer rods. That's the prime example right there of when they're sitting below the hole and they can just, uh, this rod just absorbs everything, right? If it was a short stubby rod, every time it pulled it got too it got so far it would create just solid tension but this is like just so forgiveness right it's like a trampoline what's even more cool about today scoring a 30 inch on a spot that i've never fished before mapping is so amazing everybody talks about like live scope but honestly having one foot contour mapping that is the way to find spots oh what's that one that one right there, that one, that one again, it's chasing fish around. Get over here, buddy, turn. Here it comes, here it comes. Come on, here it comes, yeah, this one right here. That was nice, another decent fish. This one looked like, appeared to be chasing fish around too. Not as big, but a nice one. I love nothing more when they stretch out like that on the live imaging jig right there in the top of its mouth, easy. <laughs> like I said, not as big as the first one, but same thing. It's just down there chasing some of those smaller fish around. I don't have many minnows left. Well, I think with those last two fish, I'm going to wrap it up. I still got a pile of little fish down here and could easily have another nice one come through but I'm not greedy. I've got a pile of videos to edit. I've been trying to like grind as hard as I can between fishing and editing. It's just like nonstop. Plus obviously had Christmas to deal with in the mix of it, but I've been trying to do at least two videos a week. If not more, that's always going to be the goal going forward is at least two videos a week and more if I can. I appreciate everybody watching. Today was a fun day. <laughs> Little guys chasing me. Today was a super fun day. It was one of those like started grindy and I just put my head down and just kept moving around small small moves i think a key is if you're on fish small moves if you're not on any fish make bigger moves but i was seeing fish so i kept making some small moves finally found the spot i wanted to set up on there will be a waypoint going right here and i plan to visit this spot again in the future because big fish tend to hang out in the same areas big fish spots are generally big fish spots this seems to be a little bit everything but obviously there was one big fish here so thank you so much for watching and don't forget get outside